Now the story Browns don't need to hear, bro. One of the great Eminem, God bless his soul. His name is Marcellus James from Children Projects. Some know him as M, some know him as Majestic Mathematics, but I know him as my best friend and my brother. And I know Brownsville was really, really like worried. He was trying to find out what happened with him. And unfortunately, me and him was, me and him met the bed stop boxing. Because it was nice with his hands. I used to go down there or whatever. I wanted the box and all that, but you know, they said I was a little bit too chubby. I had my regular heart because of the blood, so they didn't really give me no play. But he wanted to open up in my neighborhood in a barbershop. Old time by the name of Chicks on Utica and St. Mark's. His mom's Miss Black had the liquor store, legendary liquor store right across the street. And then um, they bumped into each other. And I'm like, damn, but he's from Randy. He was like, nah, just be cutting here at the school and on the weekends. I'm telling him, he was like, like very, very proud of him. Very adamant about where he was from and who he was. And he was God. And um, I feel I'm not responsible for his death. Like it breaks my heart to this day because sometimes it's like the past that he got because he was affiliated with me opened up a door to really people find out the character and the man he was as his person 10 toes down and that led to his demise you know what I'm saying and this is like I'm talking about 92 he got the 92 blazer but he got the 91 Corvette engine and the blazer. If anybody remembers this era, it was a, um, a detail shop on Atlantic Avenue. They used to do custom kits and everything. My man had a purple 92 body blazer, but it had an outstanding kit on it. The inside of his seats was pink, white trimming, said Eminem with white letters, but he had the 91 Corvette engine. He, this, I'm talking about, he didn't, this wasn't the 20 era. Like, he had like like the chunk rings on it, like the BBSs with the 18s, but he stood out like the Mexican joints. Mm-hmm. But he made a statement, and when he died, he actually bought out a 190E, when his baby mother by the name of Ray brought out a 190E, but it was his, and it was orange and all that. But unfortunately, when him came, came to Utica Avenue, him had shown charismatic, the women loved him, his heart was so genuine and he was pure that people just accepted him. So it, it went from, that ain't Dice Man no more, that's him. You know what I'm saying? That's the way it was supposed to be because that's who he was as a man. And it was connected to a lot of things. Like, back then, it was, it was different, man. Like, and had to have on connect. Um, but there's a lot of people from UK having to recognize this and remember this. At one time, at the best ever on the block, it was called Satan. And there was some other dancers like Johnny Greenlee. He did everything, God bless the dead. My uncle Ice Water. Fred McIntosh, you know what I'm saying? Big Daryl, so on, so on. You can have the legend, Sun Guard, Stunt, Great Trev, God bless the dead. Well, they had a little little game out there called Triple D. So, them games was out there doing their thing with the Elrond, you know. The old timers was running through, but I mean, the M bumped into these African cats. They gave them that super, 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 super Mario brother. And next thing you know, unfortunately, uh, uh, a fiend OD. And they popped up. Like, I'm talking about dudes like Ron, Popeyes, Browns. They on Utica and Park Place. Like, and this was like, like really, really overwhelming and mesmerizing to me because as a young kid, I'm 16, 17 years old. I'm like, yo, if a person just died or something, why would somebody come from the old town? Thanks to the name of Big Duke from Utica and Park Place. Say, man, let me tell you something, man. When that everyone knocking nigga down, this is coming from all over for them. So, right then, I understand that game is a little bit dangerous, but, um, we controlled it. We had a little barbershop on Sterling. Mm. So, um, you come to Park Place and right inside, right across the street from the barbershop. Anybody familiar about that era? And we did our thing. The police was on us. You know, we was terrorizing the block. I'm talking about Labor Days, maybe 15,000 on that day. The police on every block. The Judy Avenue was, was the spot. Like, in Labor Day, every train comes to Utica Avenue, whether it's the A train or the three train. So, since we're on Utica Avenue, because I'm from 17 Utica Avenue, right from the B46 bus stop, it was like a fashion show. It was like literally Harlem week in Brooklyn because this is a massive females and people that would come from all over the world. While people was coming through with the confusion, the police are scared to death because they're not from the neighborhood. And that's the problem with the 
police system in my eyes. Like, they're good police out there, but then again, they're police out there that are fearful to situations that they never came in contact with and react differently, as opposed to people that grew up in neighborhoods on violence. The same thing, like Cameron said, two years shot every day, but if you're not used to seeing that, this may be horrific and detriment to your, to your mind. And this is the problem with the police system. I think that we should have quote unquote better education and etiquette put into quote unquote police officers. I think that it should be like a survey of police officers from certain neighborhoods that want to control those certain neighborhoods that already have developed relationships with people in the neighborhood and they can turn out to a better outcome instead of things just born and escalate and police against them. Nah, that's just not what it's supposed to be. But back to him. We was out there playing, doing our thing, living a life, living a life. And um, M started a crew by the name of Chemical. And I had someone, he wanted to call it Chemical. And I never forget him saying to me, he was like, um, your dice, the whole world runs by chemicals. He's like, by some reason, they're going to have to have some medication to help you or to get you over an ailment. And he said, look what we're doing here in the street. So we had chemical, it was two guns for us. Anybody that knew about that chemical thing, we walked up, we put our hands together the side of a gun and rubbed it side by side and hugged each other. Hold you a side of Wild Bill. Wild Bill, wherever you at, original chemical member. And then M started um, branching out. It was just like somebody gave him a chance and started giving out chances. But unfortunately, one of the um, people that he put under his wing <coughs> is what led to his demise. Me, personally, the person that he allowed under his wing, I never liked his style. I ain't gonna go into his name or everything, but the hood note, he's from Sterling between Utica and Rochester. Never liked the nigga style. Never trusted the nigga style because his eyes was always funny. And like I told my man, I said, he ain't around you because of you. He around you because of what we do. But he was known as a shooter. You know what I'm saying? He had a little bit of charm. He got into my man's arms. And then over the years, you know, it started becoming who him was. I'm still being who I am, but I'm starting to branch off into my own thing because, you know, gangsters walk with each other. We don't follow. You know, unfortunately, that's when his relationship with the dude that allegedly lined him up came tighter. One night, my man, him, came to my crib. It was me and my man, Baguette, a.k.a. Duke Dirty, Super Dave from Clark and Utica. We walked in my house, my grandmother, the rest of the song, and McLeod, she comes in the door. She said, y'all doing, baby? I said, all right, so babe comes in first. My grandma said, baby, go ahead. Next thing you know, M comes in. My grandma says, hold on, baby, what's that? I didn't even recognize him. M had a Bible in the back of his pocket. My grandma said, what's that? M said, um, that's just a Bible, grandma, don't worry about that. She said, no, 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 God told me to ask you about that. I used to laugh at my grandmother back in the days, you know what I'm saying? Because I used to think, like, full on quote, she used to be like, telling me certain things about friends and people in the street. I'm like, yeah, grandma, you don't know what you're talking about. That's not what she knew everything she was talking about. Right along, for sure, the Bible that yeah, Anne had, it was the Satan Bible. This is the first time that I ever was even put aware. I never knew that there was a Bible for the devil. But the Satan Bible was a um, white guy, Caucasian dude, bald head, but like a um, Count Dracula goatee coming down. And my grandmother said, baby, you can't come in this house. And he said, oh, come on, Graham, you gonna do that to me? She said, oh, I said what I said, and I appreciate it if you leave my hallway. So him left, he wanted to go to the cabinet. So we didn't pay no mind. So I said, yeah, boy, I'll check you later. Don't even worry about that. So when I comes back in the crib, my friend Dave, because we own the whole building, so my grandmother says, so my grandfather passed me like a year prior. She's on the first floor now. Dave is on the top floor waiting for me to come upstairs. She said, call David downstairs. So I called the guest downstairs. We go in the motherfucking crib. My grandmother pulls out a bottle, a bottle of blessed olive oil. Puts a cross over my head, says in the name of Jesus, puts a cross over my friend Dirty, forgets the name of Jesus. She said, you need to cherish him and talk to him because he won't be around too much longer. Three weeks later, my friend was killed. And and, and the night that he was killed, still bothers me to this day because of the way it happened. And came to UK Avenue, August 5th, 1995, it was an extremely hot day. And we had a store on um, Utica Avenue between St. John's and Lincoln called Woolworth. 
M said, you know what? Sometimes these kids out here looking fucked up. Yo, let's go up there and buy a water gun for the kids. Let's have a water gun fight. Let them go up there and buy about maybe $140, $160 worth of water guns. Now, back then, that's a lot of water guns. You understand what I'm saying to you? So the whole day was a beautiful day. We all had on three last suits from the Great Silence on Pickens Avenue. We all had three last suits on, but M had his velour jacket down the block and he had his shirt on and he had a vest on. Because at that particular time, niggas knew it was some war, allegedly. About some heaven on shit about people getting robbed and so on and so forth. You know, with some old time gangsters that he may have gave some work to. And he took my man to be light and my man did what he had to do. So about maybe two thirty, three o'clock that afternoon, we were all having a good time, man. Like and just standing in the corner, he had the most beautiful dreads, his eyes was light green, like this dude like like when I say admiration, this was a dude that I really, really cherished and appreciated every moment I had with him. That's why I named my son after him. My son name is myself. Make a long story short, I told him, I said, yo, you know your vest is showing, bro. He's like, oh shit, because of the, of the water guns, an impression of his bulletproof vest was coming through the shirt. So the, um, the dude that allegedly lined him up, lined up pulling up and was like, yo, baby, let's go down the block. You know what I'm saying? Change the clothes and all that. Like, Make a long story short, they wound up going down there. So M said, yo, I'm gonna beat you later on. Cause you know, I got these tickets to the Source Awards. We supposed to be going to the Source Awards that night in Chicago Square. That's when all Shug Knight and Snoop Dogg and all of them came up and was like, yo, ain't got no love for these. We had tickets, my man had like about 14, 15. So we supposed to be going out there and that or whatever. He said, yo, when I beat you, man, just make sure you're ready cause you know how you move with the bras and all that shit. I said, it ain't gonna fit in there, So cool. About maybe 4, 4.30, I'm on Selected in Sterling. I told my man Fred Jones, because he used to go back and forth out of town when we used to go to Syracuse. That's another story. Middle of this mile. Woo! That's another story. We used to go up there. But um, he wanted to come to the house because I told him, yo, you're going to the Sports Awards. So back in the days, we used to um, get the Hawaiian punch, a half a lemon from the corner store, and the 40th and eyes, and make that, that midnight punch, drinking midnight. Been um, uh, St. Ives halfway down, putting the lemon in a Hawaiian punch can and cooling it, smoking with a couple of blunts. So that's about a little bit after five. Me and my room, me and my man Fred Jones, my mother's in the front, we smoking, or whatever, we drinking or whatever. So Fred was like, What you wearing that? I'm like, I don't really know yet. I had two couple of suits. I had to make a guest suit back in the days. I don't know if y'all remember the guest suits or whatever. I had the guest suit top and bottom with the leather, with the beige leather coming across the front and the back of the denim jacket and my jeans. Like a, a, a load of belt buckle in the back had the same level. Very disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? I can say it myself. And um, so, you know, I just heard something go boom, 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 bah, bah, boom. I look at Fred. The first thing I said is the nigga that allegedly lined my man up just killed somebody because he was known for playing with the gun. You dig what I'm saying? And um, Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Next thing you know, my mother is in the front. And somebody's coming to the house ringing the bell, but the bell didn't ring in the front because my window was actually on the cabinet. My mother's mom was on the back by the fire escape, so the bell went there. And then all I was, I heard my mom was walking up in the front. And all of a sudden, we got the radio up, so I can't really hear what's going on. And that next thing I hear a scream, screaming, so I opened the door. I'm like, what's going on? She grabbed me, like, please. Don't go outside, don't go outside, please don't go outside. Please don't go outside. So I hear my man going, ooh, 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 ooh. That was a call we had back in the day. So I come to the other window. It's my man, Dan Little Pioneer, Malcolm Moore, from the original Low Life. The original Low Life, you dig what I'm saying? He like, your smell, just killed him. So my body got so weak, I was holding my arms. Like on the window sill and just fell, just collapsed. So my mother laid on me, literally laid on me crying, like, please don't go downstairs, please don't go downstairs. So, you know, of course, our old child and her mother going downstairs, made my man Fred come. We walked through the cabin, the crowd is crazy. And some of them was like, assassination of Martin Luther King, and so many people outside, so I'm getting up to the front. And let's say I'm going with the same stoop that unfortunately that person passed away from an overdose is what my man was doing. When I came around the corner, the police had picked up my man. They picked my man up and dropped him on the floor. 
he said, well, he did. And I know people really don't know about the killing seven streets up. Oh, you can't know, I don't know about right now, but back in the days, yeah, police like Justin Fano, Mike Paul, Johnny Jack Rabbit. I'm talking about these was cold blooded animals. They didn't give a respect about nothing. So I'm trying to find out of me being angry when I saw the police. The niggas beat literally shit out of me. That wasn't the first time police, you know, you beat shit out of me, but we was just from the era of fighting police. So now, my man is dead, so we all in all. Next morning, we wake up, we all upset and everything like that, so. You know, like I told you, I'm deep set, but being a low life is definitely like that because uh, my mother works for Saks Fifth Avenue and she used to get put on quote, what's called a double discount and an employee discount. I Meaning, if she works there and it's an employee discount, she gets 40% of a certain thing. But if you're an employee, excuse me, if you don't work there, it's a 40% discount. But if you're an employee and you work there, it's called a double discount, so that's 80% off. So a lot of the real First, low lights, they didn't stand their low, low, low goosies. My mother bought it. And they came to the crib and gave her that bread for it. Mm. And that's a fact. And they know what I'm saying. From the drinks from Dan Lowe's and even the first black one, I got pictures of it. With the gold with the red sleeve and, and that shit on the clown work. That's not nothing to belittle or talk more about anybody because they had their bread up. But I'm talking about as far as the low lights, if you really want to stand low life, my mother was a low life because she works in Satchel Avenue and had dominion over the whole store back then. The next morning we are on, so you know our spot was the McDonald's on Eastern Parkway, Eastern Parkway in Utica. So, you know, like I told you, I'm, I'm real affiliated with the low life, so I bumped into my man, Rich Low, which is the great fit and old brother. And then, so I, I approached him as a gentleman, like I told him to approach me. But you'll never know how I may feel about you until you really look at that. Yes, I saw I'm, I'm, I'm hurt. I'm not getting rich. But could you do me a favor? He's like, yeah, what up, man? I'm like, yo, you know what I'm saying? He has some spooky shit about it. The niggas pulled on the poop. They got it. My man ran to the park place and dipped in the building, and niggas broke in the crib. Like, this is the part that fucked me up. We had a crib on the car in Rochester. Then, ironically, the day him got killed, niggas broke into the crib. You know what I'm saying? This would break my heart to tell this story. My man, him was killed with his own guns. You understand what I'm saying to you? So, allegedly, the dude denied him up. This dude had a nine on it and had a 23 shot tank in his trunk. So, allegedly, the dude denied him up, made him put them guns down, but they broke in the crib and took the guns before my man was killed. Coming kind of find out to the police, listen to all that bullshit. So, now I'm looking at the dude rich on some yo. That's your building. Y'all ain't seen nobody really run out the building. I don't know where this energy came from. God looks at me and says, I don't give a fuck. I don't know what he was intending on saying, but that's, but that's when that Coney Island work came from. And it started on the first floor of McDonald's and it ended up in the basement of McDonald's where they used to have little tree parties for the kids. I tried to beat their life out of the first floor of my nigga. Like Moses said, when you're in the room, I'm still going to protect your name. I'm from that other. You ain't going to talk about my name in front of me. You definitely ain't gonna disrespect my man life in front of me. So, you know, that, that situation, you know. Like you said, ping pong, we break out, I go to the club, I'm a fan. The guy by the name of Sandlo, great Sandlo brother, which is facing Shannon Green. I hear Shannon in front of my door, yo, guys, yo, guys. He got rich, I mean, excuse me, he got AZ with him. He looking uncomfortable. But Shannon from Utica Avenue. You know what I'm saying? He's from Crest Street on Utica Avenue. He's from 161 Utica Avenue. I'm from 170, so our bond is different. You already know about the Utica Prospect bar. Y'all ain't coming to Utica Avenue, but that's foolishness. And that's a dead fact. So the reason why Shan walked with him down there is for it to be a respectful conversation. At that particular time, I had a 30 yard seven. And a burst of 380. I bought the 30 yard seven now. You know what I'm saying? I want this nigga know you play with me, I'm gonna knock your fucking head off. Jan said, check this out, Dice. I just want to ask you something. What happened with the nigga Rich? I said, I went to the dude talking to him, quote unquote, about him. The nigga said, fuck him. He ain't give a fuck about him. And the work started. AZ says to me, damn, Dice, y'all had to jump my brother. I said, ain't nobody jumping your brother. That was a film. Ain't nobody put hands and feet on him except me. And that's why I respect AZ to this day because AZ said, that's all I needed to know and walked off. And unfortunately, to this day, Rich got that stitch work. That was 20 years ago, and I feel bad as a man now that that had to happen 
But the instinct, where we came up, unfortunately, we move off instinct as the kids. When you get older, you start to move logical. You know what I'm saying? And with my mind in state now, if I would have walked up on him and asked him, you know, if you heard anything about it, his, he could have gave me the whole response. And I would have expected him to say peace and walk off. Because that's who I am now. But to that day, that's who I was. And unfortunately, him was killed. Allegedly, by dudes from Park and Press, excuse me, Park and Rochester, from that same block, that same crowd, and dudes is in jail or whatever. But the dude that allegedly lined it up is like he don't know. And, 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 and let me tell you how God worked. My son, mother, we, we never really got along. But I gotta tell you, she might have saved my life because the dude that allegedly lined him up called me one night. True story, my grandmother can push out of heaven from lying. He's like, you guys, you know, niggas that they got it in? Uh 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 uh. We're going to rock and roll, and then I talk about it. He said, yeah, we're going to go on like a ground. We're going to catch them niggas like around 11 30, 12 o'clock. You know what I'm saying? We're going to go catch them niggas. What it is? So I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's go. I told my baby mom, we're going to kill the niggas that killed my dad. My baby mother was telling me, yo, you told him, don't fuck with that nigga. He ain't right. I don't like him. I'm like, get you out your mind. We're going to lay these niggas down. You know what I'm saying? Make a long story so I'm sitting in the crib. She leaves. She's disgusting. She go to her crib. She's staying in Clinton Hills with her mother. I'm still staying on you to get out This woman called my mother and said, do me a favor. Make sure your son don't leave the house because they're going to do something they ain't supposed to. My mother came sit back up and said, so shy. I'm going to call them. They looked me in my eyes and said, if you love me, you'll stay in this house tonight. And I was like, Ma, you know, they killed him or whatever. She said, but you got to understand something. If you love me, you'll stay in this house tonight. Now that I think about it, the dude that left me lined up there, he wanted me to meet him at Coney Island, excuse me, at King's Plaza, like on the strip, by, by the diner. He said, yeah, diner and a toys of us back there. He said, they had the niggas, and we was going to tear their ass up back there, and they never went. And I know if I'd have left that night, I'd have died. It's something like, 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 like ironically, like the AZ story, when he was talking to Cole. And that's another thing that I don't really fuck with. It's long lived to miss you. The day I die. Awesome. Um, the Browns, man. I just wanted y'all to know this, man. It wasn't no UK Avenue shit. Some sucker MC shit. And M was one of the dudes where his heart was so pure and beautiful that he wanted to make sure everybody ate around him. Like, M wasn't the dude to sit around and be like, yo, I'm going to get this bird over the other thing. And y'all just don't watch. Nah. If you had a bird or two, them kept a half a bird and put that back in front of him down with the team. So it was no need to really, really be upset with this man because he had, like, like, I loved him for him. Like, before the, before the work, before any of that from boxing. But there's, there's some people in the world, quote unquote, my dude last that they don't have this no dedication or determination, so they ain't gonna have a will to ever, ever, ever succeed in life. So. You gotta keep fucking up packs and keep fucking up packs and keep fucking up packs. It's not because you don't want to do right, it's just you just not gonna do right. And when Eric Cole came to the town, and I say he came to the town, he came to the town, especially for me. And um, his baby mother ran or whatever, respectfully to her. My condolences to her. But it's only one woman in my, in my opinion that really loved my man. And her name was Mouse. She was from Stone and Utica. And that's who I'm always gonna look at. As his woman. But to the whole Brownsville, you know what I'm saying? I birthed a legend. While I started to me, it's still always rest heavy. And heavy, 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 heavy. In the presence of God, because that's who he was. And I love him so much, and I miss him daily. But these streets ain't right, baby. These streets ain't right at all. Like I said, this big guy's.